Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on anatomy and this particular screencast is focusing on the ATP resynthesis cycle in relation to energy. We have three forms of energy you need to understand for your exams with OCR. Chemical energy, which is the energy stored within bonds of chemical compounds. Potential energy, which is stored energy by the body that's ready to be used when we need it. And kinetic energy, which is energy in the form of muscle contraction or joint movement. Please make sure you revise this slide and write down the definitions as I've just described because they'll be useful for your notes. All right, so let's start with ATP. When the body takes in food, we start to store that as chemical energy. And the way we store that is in the form of adenosine triphosphate, which is known as ATP. Any movement we use with our muscle groups will require ATP. And so we need a continual supply of food and therefore energy because we need that for kinetic energy, as I've just discussed, to, to fire the muscle groups when we need to move. Usually this intake is through carbohydrates, through the form of bread, pasta, etc. Or we can also do this through isotonic drinks these days. So before we start with ATP, we need to understand another compound called ADP. So the easiest way to do this is to draw this into your notes as we go. So on the screen we have an adenosine molecule and two phosphates, which are the green peas. On that screen now, that whole image is what we call adenosine diphosphate, DI. And the reason it's called diphosphate is because there's only two phosphates, so two green peas with that compound. If we want to change adenosine diphosphate, into ATP, adenosine triphosphate, then we need to add another phosphate somehow. And the only way to create an energy compound is through ATP. So we need adenosine to form with the third phosphate. So just to recap that for your note, ATP is only formed when ADP, adenosine diphosphate, binds with the third phosphate. So it must have three phosphates. Now at this point in time, the actual energy is stored within the bond of the last phosphate group. So if you look at my green peas, they're connected by red lines. The red lines are the bonds. And we're looking at the last P and the last red line. And that is where energy is stored when it's in the body not being used. Now if I want to contract a muscle, I need to release that energy. And so in order to release that energy, we use an enzyme called ATPase, which is there in red, and that enzyme breaks, it smashes off that last bond, and that creates energy to supply to the working muscle groups or wherever the body would require it. Now as that ATPase smashes off that bond, we then lost that phosphate, and so the compound now becomes ADP again because there's only two phosphates. When we release that phosphate in a, from ATP compound, we call that an exothermic reaction. So the way I remember that is EX for exiting. We're releasing the, the phosphate. So an exothermic reaction. And the strict definition of an exothermic reaction for your exams, very important, is a chemical reaction that releases energy as it progresses. So we've released that phosphate, we've broken that bond, and therefore energy is released and used by the body. Now as we said there, once the exothermic reaction has occurred and we've released the last phosphate from ATP, what we're left with is ADP. Now the problem with that is that we can only store 80 to 100 grams of ATP in the body because as the body uses the energy, we need to replace it. So as we have ATP, we release that energy and it becomes ADP again. We've got to get that phosphate back from somewhere. We need to restore ATP. And when we're restoring ATP from ADP, 
we call that ATP resynthesis. And that involves both ADP and ATP. So again, I've talked a lot there about this theory, but what I will do in the next slide is show you an image of how this cycle is constantly working to resynthesize ATP. When we add that phosphate back on to adenosine diphosphate, so on the screen at the moment you've got adenosine and two phosphates, we've got ADP. If we add the P back onto that image, so adding the phosphate, we call that an endothermic reaction. And this is the opposite of an exothermic reaction. And again, you'll need the definition. It's a chemical reaction that requires energy to be added for it to progress. So we add that phosphate on, we've now got ATP again, through an endothermic reaction. So again, here's the slide that I was just mentioning about that talks about resynthesis. And again, I would draw this out because it helps provide an image as to what we're talking about. So to start with in the body, we have adenosine and two phosphates. We've got ADP on the screen. As I just mentioned, if we add a phosphate, we create ATP. Three phosphates are now with adenosine. But if we release the phosphate, because we need to create energy, it goes back to ADP again. So it's this constant cycle of ADP to ATP that happens in milliseconds in the body, thousands and thousands of times a day, whenever you're contracting your muscle groups or the body needs energy. And just to recap with the reactions, when ADP gains the phosphate, so on the left of the diagram, this is an endothermic reaction. And when we release the phosphate, remember the EX for exit, we are using an exothermic reaction. So this is the ATP resynthesis cycle. This is it on the screen. If you're not sure about this, please make sure you go back over the screencast to go over what I've said and use your diagrams and, and try and work it through yourself. It's probably the easiest way to do this. Okay, thanks for watching. And again, if you need any more help or support with A-Level PE, please head to the ISBPE channel on YouTube.